Welcome everyone to this book symposium on a terrific book from one of our fantastic colleagues here at ANU, Edna Sherlock, Associate Professor Edna Sherlock. Thank you for the book's focus is timely for what it reflects about. The book looks at deference to domestic decision makers in international adjudication and it uses an empirical methodology to map approaches to deference over a 95-year time period and in the decisions of four international courts and tribunals. Uh, and using that empirical study, I uh, draw out implications of deference for uh, the structure of the relationship between international law and domestic decision making. I think the book is um, of interest both theoretically but perhaps for government lawyers more practically because it really um, provides a framework for looking at how uh, international adjudicators deal with this quite difficult issue of how much deference to give domestic decision making. And so for those of us who uh, work in government, we are always interested, of course, uh, in ensuring that appropriate deference is given to state domestic decisions uh, because of either the expertise or something like that. So, yeah, I think it has, it's going to have real resonance for practitioners and, the, and, and academics alike. There has um, been you know, a, a very poor understanding of the way that international courts and tribunals allow any kind of deference or is it a margin of appreciation within some international legal orders or is there some other kind of uh, concept that they apply, a concept of proportionality perhaps, to decide whether or not that measure is a breach of an international obligation or not, but that's really been poorly underst understood. And, and what Esme's book does is, is, is carry out an amazingly rigorous um, exercise of empirical research in reviewing 1700 or more than 1700 decisions to look at a, in a very granular way at the tools that international courts and tribunals use to make their assessment of the legality of those decisions and, and really provides a, a wonderful theoretical framework for public international lawyers and policy makers around the world. So it's, it's really I'm um, extremely grateful to both uh, the Office of International Law and the Centre for International and Public Law for co-sponsoring the launch um, as I mentioned at the launch, uh, the project began uh, when I was still employed in the Office of International Law, uh, working on international claims for Australia, uh, and it's been drawn to a close since I've joined uh, the ANU College of Law and the Centre for International and Public Law. So it's really nice to have both of those institutions involved in the launch tonight. Um, the panel that's commented on the book tonight is also uh, drawn from uh, my connections to, to various colleagues in academia and practice who have supported me over many years and they've been incredibly uh, generous with their time and, and comments so I'm, I'm really grateful to them as well. <laughs>